Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you an interview with the two representatives from the English department at the University of Vienna. Clemens and Stefania kindly agreed to um, answer my questions uh, regarding studies, uh, Vienna, Austria uh, and uh, tips for students. So if you're interested in, continue watching. department at the University of Vienna and um, I've been a student representative for the past two years. I'm from Bulgaria and I currently study the Masters of Anglophone Literatures and Cultures. Um, I've been doing this for four years. I'm from Vienna actually and I currently study English Language and Linguistics as the Masters program. Mm -hmm. In terms of degree programs, our department offers several. We have a Bachelor's degree of English and American Studies a Bachelor's of Education in English, also two master programs, one in Anglophone Literatures and Cultures and one in English Linguistics. Uh, additionally to that, we have the Master's of Education, which is um, the second part of the Bachelor's of English. Um, also, we have the um, um, old um, diploma program for English teachers and of course a handful of PhD students of the department. Mm -hmm. So in order to become a student at the University of Vienna, you need a proof of German knowledge at C1 level. There are different certificates that are recognized by our university, so you can check this online. Uh, you also need a high school diploma, and if you are a non-European student, uh, you should provide a certificate or recognition from your home university that you are actually um, enrolled in a similar degree program as the one that you're applying for. Mm -hmm. And how about English language? Um, in terms of English language, um, since the Bachelor's of English and American Studies now has an entrance exam, um, it is expected that you have a B2 plus level of English. However, this is not evaluated through a certificate you just um, take the entrance exam and your English skills will be proved um, by a written test. Mm -hmm. um, how often do you have breakfast in your department? So we as student representatives, we um, host monthly breakfasts um, that are themed and um, we, we offer different themes every month. For example, we've had Harry Potter breakfast, Game of Thrones breakfast or Alice in Wonderland and we host them every month for the students to gather and to mingle with each other and yes. mm -hmm. and who is responsible for that um we the student representatives we take care of the breakfast we do the shopping we set up everything and um, also during the breakfast we're there for students to consult us and we just want to help the students um, engage with each other and also inform them of current um, ongoings at the department Mm -hmm. We also sometimes have collaborations with the societies that we support, so this will also go into the subject of having themed breakfast. Like for example, we had a queer society breakfast where we and our queer society prepared uh, our pride breakfast in June. And we are also looking forward to another collaboration with our creative writing society in the fall where we will dedicate a breakfast to creative writing. Mm -hmm. And who supports you? So, I mean, you have to buy all products, you have to go to the shop and buy everything. Um, um. We're actually supported by the ÖH, which is the Österreichische Hochschulwillenschaft. And they um, give us a yearly budget and we kind of calculate the budget ourselves. And so some money of that budget we use for the monthly breakfasts. Mm -hmm. And do other faculties have breakfast or something else? Um, not, not really that we know of, but in general other departments they often have kind of parties in the evenings or like, I don't know, 
get-togethers, but not really breakfasts. But in general, mm -hmm. some other departments, they do offer um, events for the students to mingle and talk to each other. Mm -hmm. um, and do you have a cafeteria in the linguistics department? Um, unfortunately, not or really. Or in campus? Um, the thing is that um, at the campus, um, we have several different faculties. Um, and because of that, we have a lot of different restaurants. We have um, several shops. Um, at the department itself, we just have what vending machines. Yes. Uh, but Beer. there are many options yeah. for you to um, go and grab a coffee or something to eat uh, at the premises of the campus. In general, the University of Vienna does offer cafeterias, but they're mm -hmm. not on this campus, they're off campus somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But you can go there and eat um, a full meal for around four or five euros. So it's not too expensive, but it's not, it's not very close to the department, like you have to, mm -hmm. to walk a bit. I know that the Faculty of Informatics, I think. Yeah, the Nick building has yeah. it on, on the like sixth or seventh floor. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But I don't know, it's not really, you cannot, I don't know, I never could go there because in between classes I had only very little time to eat, so it would have taken too long to go there. Mm -hmm. So part of the things that we organize as student representatives at the department are um, the annual student conference, which is also an international conference and it always takes place in the fall and everyone is welcome to join. Um, other things that we organize are, for example, the practice sessions for our two POX classes. Those classes focus on pr uh, pronunciation and are tied to either American or British pronunciation. We also support tutorials, which are accompanying lectures um, that are happening throughout the semester. And as part of the um, extracurriculum activities that students can profit for, from, uh, we also have several workshops. One of them is a workshop that we have as a collaboration with the Metropole magazine. Um, it's an English uh, speaking magazine here in Vienna. And um, in a way we um, offer our students the opportunity to get in touch with um, something a little bit different from what we do here at the English department. Okay. Yeah, so um, next question about your community who and how students can join your community? So in general, we're a team of seven people at the moment, and or eight maybe. Um, so we're um, a, a quite a small team. And in general, we're always looking for new members um, and everyone is welcome to join our community. Um, they can just write us an email, they can approach us at any of our office hours that we have during the week, or also just come to the breakfast and talk to us. Um, so we're always help, uh, happy to welcome new members. Um, yes. Um, mm -hmm. um, and how often do you have uh, meetings? In general, um, we meet once a month to discuss um, what's going on within um, our student representatives community. So we update each other um, about everything that's going on. Um, yes, we also um, communicate a lot online, so we always um, keep each other updated on everything that's happening via Facebook Messenger. Um, and also we um, try to meet during the breakfasts also, because we always organize them together. So usually um, we come together t twice a month, I would say, in our mm -hmm. whole group to um, see what's happening. In general also, um, we try to have a team outing once a semester where we meet and do something outside of university, some fun activities, but this is um, quite hard to do because everyone has really tight schedules. Mm -hmm. but, yes. So yeah, why is the linguistic department's library closed on Sunday? Well, in general, <laughs> Austria has um, slightly different opening hours than the most um, European countries. So as um, many other public institutions on Saturdays, our library is also closed. However, if you really want to um, 
make use of your Saturday and put the time into studying, you can definitely go to the main library, which is really beautiful. Actually, some people compare it to Hogwarts, so if you're a Potterhead, you can definitely go and check it out. And also on Sundays, because the main library is closed, unfortunately, uh, we also have the National Library, uh, where you have to pay an entrance fee, but it's a really nice place and um, it has plenty of spaces. So if you need a quiet space to learn and study, I would recommend going there. Um, in general, the fact that uh, libraries and shops are closed on Sunday ties in with an Austrian way of thinking that kind of weekends should be used for um, spending time with your family or your loved ones so that you don't have to work on the weekends. So I think this is um, kind of an Austrian tradition that's brought over to the mm -hmm. next century. And do you stay in Vienna or you go somewhere in Hauptstadt Salzburg uh, during the weekends? Yeah. Um, I think um, a lot of students, they actually, they do travel on the weekends because there's um, a, a special train ticket that makes going on trains um, cheap, if not free for um, people. It's like a yearly ticket. And a lot of my friends, they have the ticket, so you can travel throughout Austria for a very low price. Um, that does not apply to me because I usually work on the weekends. Um, but I think, yeah, a lot of people, they go outside of the city um, during the weekends also there is a lot of great um, hiking spots outside of the city or just I don't know close to the Danube yes so definitely if you're interested in um, studying here and doing the bachelor's of English and American studies or any of our degree programs uh, we would highly recommend that you are interested in English literature, cultural studies, and um, linguistics because uh, the content of uh, our degree programs focuses on um, language uh, and those theories regarding literature and culture and it's a um, common mistake that people will interpret studying English um, as advancing uh, in your English skills um, the thing is that this is something that comes naturally throughout um, your studies, but this is not the main focus of those programs. And um, as of the winter term, 2020, no, 2019, we have um, an entrance exam uh, and all the information is online. Uh, however, you should prepare uh, for that entrance exam with the material that is provided online in order to pass and um, get enrolled. Um, also, um, what is important to say is that our curriculum is quite uh, flexible. So in, in contrast to other countries, you can pretty much choose for yourself what you want to take each semester. This sometimes is a little bit complicated because there are um, seminars and courses with specific prerequisites. Um, However, um, we have a um, table with prelim preliminary um, program where you can navigate uh, yourself um, through all of the courses and see what is suitable for you for each semester. This is very helpful because if you want to combine studying with working, you can definitely do so, um, but you have to be organized about it and inform yourself in advance. And we're quite aware that entering university can be quite a challenge after finishing high school. So we as the student representatives, we always go to the lectures of the first semesters and we kind of um, present ourselves as the team that we are and we provide them with information on how to contact us. So we're always happy to help new students overcome the difficulties that they have when they enter university like um, having to work more independently and um, tackling um, in general um, exams that are more difficult than the ones you're used to during, during your um, high school time. So yeah, we're always um, happy to help new students. Mm -hmm. And do you have special workers or consultants who can help students when they have problems with marks, with uh, I don't know, emotional problems and 
Um, in general, uh, yes, there's um, some um, points or some people you can contact on a university-wide mm -hmm. um, level. So there is some psychiatrists or in general um, people who can help you overcome these difficulties. But I think um, in terms of um, when seeking help at this department specifically, we're the first ones to contact. So a lot of students, they contact us via email or they just come to our office hours if they have problems with um, professors or with any, any problems in general, they can just contact us and we usually try to help them ourselves or um, we refer them to other people or we help them approach professors or things like that. Um. So yeah, as a, me myself as an international student who was, however, not an Erasmus student here at the beginning, I um, faced the struggle that you have to find friends and your own circle. Um, but of course, with time, this comes naturally. You meet people at the department. In the beginning, I was really thankful for the former student representatives that um, organized events for students uh, at the department so that you um, get to meet people even in your first semester when you're only doing lectures. Um, and also, as someone who moved to Vienna, I always appreciated the city itself. So I love spending time walking around the city or exploring because there is so much to be seen and done in Vienna. And of course, as any other person my age, I, I don't know, I love um, walking around the Danube or um, going for a nice breakfast on a Saturday with friends and um, maybe to a concert or an opera or a musical because after all in Vienna you have it all. And um, yeah, I guess with time it all comes naturally. And how do Austrians spend free time in Vienna um, and in Austria? So in yeah. terms of the activities that one does, I think it's not very different from what foreign students do. So of course I like um, going to the Danube, um, doing activities outside, going to bars, going to the movies. So I think in that way it's a very similar lifestyle to that that foreign students have. It's just with different people, I guess. So when coming to Vienna, I think you should be prepared for a few things. Um, in general, um, you should be you should know that shops are closed on Sundays. Um, you should be aware of um, a language barrier, maybe because people here they speak Austrian German, not German German, so it can be quite difficult to understand Austrians. But I think most of the Austrians they do speak English, so I think you don't need to worry too much about this. And in general, I think uh, Vienna is a great city. There's many activities that you can um, do. Many of them are also free. So I think you, sh it's, you should um, Google and see things that are happening around the city. There's always something going on. Also, there's a lot of museums, a lot of them who are free for students. And yeah, you should just come here, enjoy the weather and the great atmosphere. And it's, Vienna is really a great city. You should eat uh, schnitzel, which is a national Austrian dish. And I don't know, enjoy your stay here. Enjoy. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please click like. And if you have any questions, uh, please leave your comment below and subscribe to the channel. See you in another video. Bye!